Hello my friends, as always, I'll show you a perpetual motion motor and how it might work. Then we'll visualize the magnetic field so we can see what's actually happening. You will then be able to explain to others what the weakness of this principle is. The device itself is a Perendev motor that consists of a total of 30 individual discs, each with two rings of 20 magnets attached in opposite directions to repel each other. So, there are a total of 1200 magnets used. The cost of this motor with each magnet costing around 3 euros and the remaining components being laser cut is around 5000 euros. And now let's start this monster. As you can see, the device actually rotates independently and thus generates energy that can probably be used endlessly. Our world energy problem is solved and we are endlessly grateful to the inventor Mike Brady. Video over, please cheer now. Ow! I don't think it will work that way. What? Who was that? Uh. I forbid such objections. Of course, the engine works, you can see it. I think it's fake. Fake? Are you serious? It's CGI at most, but it still looks great. But it doesn't work. But Mike Brady was so successful and sold many of these devices for a profit. He was a cheater. Uh, but that is no proven. He was imprisoned and then expelled from the country. But just because he couldn't get his device to work uh, himself uh, doesn't mean that the principle can't work, right? The principle is ingenious. In principle, yes. What does you mean with in principle? Oh, uh, well, maybe let's look at the principle. Fine. I will convince you. The principle is as simple as ingenious. The inventor had the brilliant idea of using the energy of magnets to repel each other. Repulsive. What? Oops, a repellent. Uh, oh, go on. So magnets repel each other? when they meet with the same pose. If a magnet has been repelled by another magnet, then moves into the magnetic field of the same polarity of a third magnet, from which it is repelled again, then the movement can be infinite. Great, isn't it? Wouldn't he rather leave? What? He's repelled after all. Then he doesn't want to enter the field of the third party. Or? Okay, you are right. Normally not. But I'll show you how to do it anyway. The inventor had an idea how it could still work. Uh -huh. First of all, let's visualize the magnetic field. Instead of invisible magnetic waves, we just take dips and hills and use gravity instead of magnetism. The hollow in the glass block represents the attractive force that exists between the magnetic fields or just magnetic attracted material like iron. The marble ball represents the impact of those forces. The poles of the magnets are identified by the colors red and blue. Different poles attract each other, like poles repel each other. External lateral displacement of the magnets against each other results in the ball actively rolling up out of the cavity, force must be used for this because the ball wants to roll back into the hollow. If we bring like poles closer together, the opposite effect results. A hill is formed and the marble ball wants to roll down. The magnets want to avoid each other. When a non-magnetic force tries to lift an object out of the magnetic field, it shows up by lifting the marble ball. The ball wants to continue to follow gravity and fall into the hollow. What does this snoring mean here? Those are the basics, so you can understand the rest. Yes, yes. Oh man, all right. So if we move two magnets with the same pose towards its other, then a hill results. The force of the magnets has a repelling effect and the ball only stays on the top because the magnets cannot move sideways. Let go of the magnet and it will immediately fly back. The repulsive field shows its effect. The ball flattens the hill. We already had. Yes, but now it gets more interesting. We slightly shift the upper magnet to the right, bring it to the position of repulsion and hold it there. Oh, what are those weights on the ball? 
They indicate that the ball wants to roll down the hill but is stopped. The ball exerts force to the right. You can clearly feel this force when you hold two magnets in your hands. If you then let go of a magnet, it moves in a straight line away from the point of created repulsion and, as you can see, the waves on the ball are gone again immediately because it can move freely again. Yes, but, but what's coming? A wagon on rails. What happens if the magnet can only move in one direction, here left or right? The little wagon in which it is attached cannot drive in any other way. Then he drives to the right, right? Exactly. All the repulsive force is converted into motion to the right. Of course, this also works in the other direction, as you can see here. Okay, but where is the trick that Mike Brady figured out? He is coming soon. First, let's see what happens when the rail car is forcibly guided past the magnet below. Let me see. First he pushes the ball up the hill and there he grows. Then the ball rolls down freely and the energy to push it up is released again. Yes, that's what will happen. You were very attentive. Now comes the trick that Mike Brady used to turn an one-off movement into a perpetual movement. Yay! He turned the magnets at a special angle, though that it takes less energy to push one magnet into the magnetic field of the other. And more energy is released when leaving the repelling magnetic field. Just spin it? Oh, well... It doesn't look like anything is changing in the magnetic field. It spreads out in a circle. Look, the hill is still the same high. Um, all right. Of course Mike noticed that too. After all, he was a genius. Mike now uses a fantastic method to unilaterally weaken the magnetic force. He uses a magnetic shield. The force of the magnets behind the magnetic shield do not affect each other, as you can see here. This means that the field is stronger on one side than on the other. So a magnetic shield? Are you sure? I think I've seen that before in one of your videos. There were two wheels with magnets and a magnetic shield between them. You said that was nonsense. Ooh, what? Oh, back then. You said that a magnetic shield made of, for example, new metal, itself is also magnetic, so it has an influence on the magnets. They indicate that it changed the position of the magnetic maximum. But not the circular expression. Have a look here. Well, I must have misinterpreted that earlier. The principle of Mike Brady's Brandeff engine simply has to work. I don't think it can work, because if the magnetic field was asymmetric, it would be like there was an elevator in the hill. The ball rose to the maximum of one side with little energy expenditure, and it then magically lifted to somewhat higher maximum of the other side to roll down the slope with more energy than the energy the ball started with. What do you say? Yes, 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 you are right in everything you say. But it would be too good to be true if it worked. In fact, the symmetrical expansion of the magnetic field cannot be cut off just like that. And if it is damped, then always symmetrically. The field lines that emerge from the magnet always re-enter with the same strength and can only be weakened overall. That's why the Perendev motor would only wobble back and forth until it finally stopped, no matter how many magnetic rings you used side by side. It's just a magnetic ramp in disguise with added extras of no value. Glad that's clarified. Yes. What do we learn from this? This system looks like it is capable of creating a permanent imbalance. But there is no permanent imbalance in our world. There is no such thing as an infinitely high hill. And you cannot go downhill for an infinitely long time. Infinity is probably not a part of our universe. And so everything tends towards balance. I hope 
I was able to shed some light on the magical world of perpetual magnet motors. If you liked the video, please give me a like and subscribe to my channel if you dare. Thanks for watching. Have fun.